the best piece of advice I ever got about uh, having family Bible time uh, together when kids are little, I got from someone else and it was magnificent. So the guy recommended taking a Psalm, like a short Psalm, and then reading just a little bit of it. And so here's like our two-year-old, the twins are two, our oldest is you know six or seven. And um, so we're opening up to Psalm one, let's say, and it's like, all right, dad's going to read this. And then I want you to listen. And then I'm going to read verse one a couple times. And I want you to try to say it with me. And so we did that. And then, you know, they stumbled through and you can see their mouths moving. And then we prayed, or I have one of them pray, and then we're done. And it took like maybe what, three and a half minutes. And it was like, okay, that was, that was great. And then the next day or a couple of days later, we did it again. And the, the first verse started to stick a little more. And maybe the day or two after that, or eventually we're getting to verse two. And then within like a couple of weeks, shock of my life, Arlene, they had the whole song memorized. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? So here we are now. We're driving to church. We're driving to a uh, uh, soccer practice on a Saturday morning, or we're doing something. And I'm like, hey, guys, you know Psalm 1? Yeah, Dad. Hey, why don't we all say that together? In fact, and maybe we'll start like the oldest. Why don't you give us the first verse and then hand it off to one of your, you know, your sister, and then she can hand it off to your brother. And so they stumble through and, you know, who knows the word that so-and-so left out? And, and you know, now it's portable right? So we can talk about this in the car. What do you think that means when he's, why do you think he said this? What, how, you know, how has this been meaningful to you? And so we're having these conversations when they're really little. And then we moved on to Psalm 23 and then Psalm 100. And so I love that. It's so accessible. It's so good. So helpful. Um, we have loved it. Um, and then as you get older, you know, one constant is what works for your family. And I think sometimes I, I would much rather a family do something three days a week than uh, to try to shoot for, you know, 40 minutes at a time, seven days a week, and then keep that up for a week and a half, and then that's it. So I'm, I'm a big fan of setting the bar low, if I can say it that way. Me too. Like, make it doable. Like, make this a habit that we yes. can actually repeat. Yeah. Right. And we just don't feel that guilt of like, oh, yeah. I'm a terrible parent. We're not having 45 minutes of Bible study almost every night of the week. Yeah. I I kind of feel like as I'm listening to this, where why did we not talk about this when my kids were little? Because that seems really <laughs> amazing. So if you're listening to this podcast and you have little kids, you have been given a gift because it's true. Like, can you imagine your two, three-year-old and they're like, blessed is the man. <laughs> but you know, it's like, how does this kid know these words? But it shows you like little kids can learn things. They're like oh, sponges. True. So why not give them God's word and you made it fun and repeatable. So that is such a good idea. You know, with your teens, it's not so much maybe, um, I don't know, like for myself, mine's are teens also. So my oldest is in college and yeah. it's been really beautiful to see, you know, we grew up with that habit of reading the Bible together when he was little. Yeah. And then yeah. I watched him as he grew into a teenager. When I came to say goodnight to him, he'd have his Bible open and he'd be reading in his room. And I was like, this is awesome because it's just if they're little and they get used to that habit of, oh, before I go to bed, yes. I open my Bible and I read it like it stays with them. So that's really cool to me. My teen daughter that's 16, she reads it at breakfast because we kind of talked about it, that if if we can tie it into something that we normally do, it's much easier mm. to 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 make sure it happens. So I'll see her do that at breakfast. And then my other daughter who's 13, I'll see her like before bedtime, she'll read a little bit, but we don't have necessarily formal Bible study together. And so what we've started yeah. doing is with my teen girl at 16, we'll go through like a Christian apologetics kind of book or something like that. So we'll pick Great a book idea. and then we'll go to coffee together. And then we talk about a chapter each coffee date. And that's worked out really well. And then with uh, my I love 13, that. Yeah, that's worked out. And that's also an idea I got from a friend that she was like, you know, you want them to read these books, but they need a reason to read the book. And then it makes you also read the book. So you have that thing in common. So that's really worked well with her. And then with my 13 year old, we've been trying to read the same thing. So right now we're both in Ecclesiastes and then mm. at breakfast, we'll kind of share sometimes what we have, what we remember, what we learn, or I'll read it like a little bit out of the commentary. So it's very short, but I found that we do it at least, you know what I mean? So, yes. so with teens, just kind of look for that way to weave it in. Do you have other ideas with teens? Cause I know with teens, it's, it's a little bit more challenging to get that, to get that momentum of, Hey, let's, let's read the Bible together or let's look at a book together. 
Well, so much of what you just said just resonates. And we've seen some of that same fruit in our family too, where, you know, just the daily habit of, you know, all right, have you been in the word this morning and asking as a parent, you know, we can ask, we, that's part of what we can't make them, but we can say, Hey, has everybody had their Bible time this morning or whatever time, you know, works for your family or you connect it with another habit of the day. And I would much rather a, a seven-year-old look through a few pages of maybe a Bible storybook and do it for two minutes and do it most every day than to feel like they've got to have like, you know, a, a more robust Bible reading plan. I feel like the daily habits and routines of like, this is part of what I do uh, as I spend time with the Lord um, is so important. And then we can encourage them like, hey, don't forget, it's more than just the time, right? You're, are you seeking the Lord? Are you calling on his name? Are you asking and begging him for his help and his spirit? So, you know, we're there to, to coach them along, but also... When I think about this, I, what comes to mind immediately, Arlene, is Deuteronomy chapter six, because it starts off with a wonderful statement of truth that the Lord is one and that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart. And then it says, and the words I command you today shall be on your hearts and you shall teach them diligently to your children. And then that familiar portion where it talks about, you know, when you're getting up in the morning and you know, making breakfast and walking on the side of the road, just in the daily rhythms of life, normal conversation. And I think we all tend to, at least in my experience, as we think about parenting, we all tend to gravitate to that last part about, you know, work it into the normal routines of life. And I say, yes, absolutely. And what precedes that, though, is it says, you shall love the Lord your God and you shall, these things shall be on your heart. And I think as a parent, it's, we, yes, we stop to teach, but even before we've stopped to teach and talk our lives are always teaching, right? We're always communicating what's important. And sometimes we're communicating the wrong things. But the great thing about being a follower of Jesus is when on our best days, we get to communicate uh, to, to our kids his holiness and his, um, his expectations for our lives and his mission. And on our worst days, then we get a chance to communicate his grace in a really meaningful way. So even when we aren't consistent or we lose our cool or we're impatient or uh, we're not giving them the best you know, love and attention they need, we can go back and say, I was wrong and model and teach for them the grace of Jesus Christ. And so on our good days, we're teaching on our bad days, we're teaching if we have a mind to see it. 